If you're in the market to buy a computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, I'm gonna point out some key features that you need to look for before you make that purchase. All right, so you're watching this video because you're in the market to buy a computer. What are you buying a desktop or a laptop or one of those all-in-one computers? And you already know the difference between a laptop and a desktop, but you might not know the difference between a desktop and an all-in-one. The desktop is usually the tower and the screen separated, while the all-in-one system is usually the tower part of it and the screen part blend all together. And of course, you know they come with the keyboard and mouse separately. Whether you go with a desktop or you go with a laptop is based on your preference. If you want portability, then you have to go with your laptop. If you don't mind being stationary, you got your computer desk already set up for it, then go for the desktop. Whether you choose the computer system with the tower and the screen separate is up to you. That's gonna be based on space. The all-in-one system is a space-saving system. So you make the choice based on your needs. Now let's go into the heart of the computer and talk about the internal specs that you need to be looking for. So let's start off with the processor. Now Intel and AMD make processors for your computer system. Both of them are usually running neck and neck as far as processors. The AMD processors are tend to be what they say more powerful, but if you're a basic user, and I'm talking about your basic user on this video, you don't need to move up to the highest level processor. That's gonna cost you more if that's not what you're looking for. Because when you move up higher in the series, you're gonna be spending more, and then you might have processing power that you're not really gonna take advantage of. So let's start off with the lowest. The lowest you're gonna get on the Intel side is the i3. The same thing on the AMD, you got Ryzen 3. Intel has i5, AMD has Ryzen 5. Intel has i7, AMD has Ryzen 7. Intel has i9 processor, and Ryzen has Ryzen 9 processors. So those are the numbers you're gonna be playing with within that range but you don't need to go with the seven or the nine if you're just a basic computer user. I would start off with the i3 if you're not doing much. If you're just surfing the web, maybe writing a couple emails, playing a little basic games, then you don't need to go any higher than that to be honest with you. If you're doing a little bit more, then I would step up to the i5 or the Ryzen 5. Now, if you plan on doing more heavy duty work, then step up to the i7 or the Ryzen 7. And if you wanna be a power user, then you wanna step up to the i9 or the Ryzen 9. But you're gonna spend more money on those i9 and Ryzen 9 processor at the current time of this video. So that's the processor. So based on your needs, you choose what's best for you. So it goes like this. The basic users start off with the threes. The power users are gonna use the nines and everybody else is gonna be in between. So you choose the five or the seven, that's up to you. Now, if it doesn't matter to you, who makes the processor, then go with the one that's on sale. You're not gonna lose out on anything. Now the next area you wanna focus on is the RAM. Now the basic computer is gonna come with four gigabytes of RAM, but I'm recommending that you start off with eight gigabytes of RAM, especially if that system has an onboard graphic card, which is something I'll explain after this. But you want at least eight gigabytes of RAM in your system to give Windows and every other apps enough room to breathe. And if you have an onboard graphic card, then the system is already gonna pull some of that RAM from your system RAM just to display the images on the screen. So if you're starting off with four gigabytes, you might lose one or two gigabytes to your onboard graphic card. So my recommendation on the RAM is start off with at least eight gigabytes or even more. And most of these systems are upgradable anyway. Some of them go up to 16 or 32. So if your plan is to add more RAM down the road, then look for the maximum amount of RAM that you can put in that system. If you want 16, that's fine. If you want 32, that's better. But if the system goes up to 16 gigabytes, that's fine. You don't have to go up to 32 because most of that memory is not gonna be used if you're not taking advantage of it. Now, speaking of the graphic card. Now, a lot of these systems have onboard graphic card. That means it's built into the system. It's not something extra. And then there are system that has an extra graphic card that sit in the graphic slot on the motherboard. Now, the choice of the graphic card, whether it's onboard or in an expansion slot, it's all going to depend on what you're trying to do. So your basic users can just get away with the onboard graphic card. While your power users now and your gamers and stuff like that are going to go with the expansion slot graphic card because 
they want a little bit more graphic power. They want to drive more displays. The graphic card that I have in my system is not onboard and it can drive up to four monitors. Right now it's only feeding three monitors, but I can add an additional monitor if I want to in the future. Most onboard graphic cards can at least drive two monitors. So you can have two monitors hooked up to the one that's built into the system. And then the expansion slot graphic cards usually come with its own memory built in so it's not feeding off the system memory. It comes in various sizes, two, three, four, eight. So look for the kind of graphic card if that's what you're trying to get or just go with onboard if you're just a basic user. So that's gonna be a preference thing. It all depends on what you're trying to do. The next thing you wanna look for is your storage. Now you can go with the SSD drive, which is a solid state drive or the regular hard drive, which is the hard disk drive. The difference between those two is gonna be based on price and speed. The SSD drive is gonna give you more speed and it's gonna cost more based on how much storage that you want. If you go with the hard disk drive, it's gonna cost less. You're gonna get more storage, but it's not gonna be as fast as the SSD drive. Now here's where you divide it up again as far as the choice. Your basic users can go with a regular hard disk drive. Your power users are the one that's gonna choose the SSD drive. That's what I got in my system. But like I said, you're gonna pay more for storage. The more storage you get, the more you're gonna pay with the SSD drives. And you can get a whole lot more for the same price with the hard disk drive. Now if the system, what you're buying, automatically come with an SSD and there's no choice, well, you just have to go with what you got. But there's a chance they're gonna give you the lowest amount of storage on that SSD drive. It might be 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte versus a terabyte or two that you will get on a computer that has a hard disk drive. So those are your choices as far as storage. Now I'm gonna touch on the screen size, but this is basically talking about laptops. If you go with a desktop, you can choose whatever screen size you want. On your laptop, you got the 13 inch, 14 inch, 15 inch, and it's 15.6 somewhere around there, but I'm just rounding it off. And then you got your 17 inches. Now, of course, if you go with the 17 inch, that's a bigger screen right there. So that's more computer that you're lugging around versus the 13 inches. Now, as far as your desktop variety, those come in different sizes. You got your 24 inches, you got your 27 inches, you got the 32 inches, you got your widescreen. They come in different flavors. And depend on what system you get, if it can handle two monitors, then you can actually have two monitors on your desk. Your laptop usually has a port that you can add an additional monitor. It might be the display port or it might be the HDMI port. So if you're at home sitting on your desk, you can hook up your laptop to that external screen and now you have a workstation going on. And then you can disconnect the cable and take that laptop with you versus the desktop. So the laptop is always gonna give you that flexibility but you can turn the laptop in a desktop work environment. So screen size on whichever device you go, laptop or desktop, is gonna be your preference. How much screen real estate do you want? Now as far as sound, you don't have to worry about that. Laptop, desktop, all of them come with some type of sound output. Pretty much all of them come with a headphone jack that you can feed the sound out to an external speaker. And most desktop come with an optical out where you can feed the sound out through that optical cable. And most computer comes with Bluetooth so you can feed that sound out wirelessly. So the choice of how you get the sound out of the computer to the speaker, you have some options there you can choose from. Now as far as ports, you got your standard USB port. Some computer comes with a USB-C. Not all, but some will. Most of them come with an HDMI port, but then some comes with a display port. Those are two digital port, they're just two different form factor. Your desktop computer is usually gonna come with Wi-Fi and Ethernet port for wired connection. Your laptop usually comes with the same configuration of the ethernet port and Wi-Fi. And some keyboard come with a backlit keyboard so you can type in a low light situation. Now, as far as the keyboard on the mouse on the desktop, some come with a wireless keyboard and mouse and some comes with the wired keyboard and mouse. If it comes with a wired and you're trying to get wireless, then maybe you can work out a deal with the salesperson or you can just buy the wireless keyboard and mouse separately. Now the last topic I wanna to touch on is the software. Now at the time of this video, Windows 10 is gonna be the software of choice. Now you have your home version of Windows 10 and then you got your pro version. They really made the pro version for business. But if you choose to go with the pro version, there's nothing wrong with that. You will get all the features of the business user inside your system. And that's usually more enhanced security 
and some other features that's not in the home version of Windows 10. Which one I would recommend? Well, it doesn't really matter. The home version is good for home users because a lot of that pro stuff they're not gonna use. I'm personally using the pro version, but then again, I'm a power user, so I do a lot of things on Windows and the Mac, so I need the highest level of software for my kind of work. Now, the last piece of software I wanna talk about is Office. Now, Office comes in two flavor. You got your subscription-based version, which is the Office 365, and then you can buy the full version of Office without worrying about the subscription. Because the subscription, you have to renew every year, and with the full version, you just buy it, keep it, you don't have to worry about renewing it every year. You will still get updates, so don't think that you're not gonna get updates because you have the full version. Microsoft will still keep updating the full version as long as they wanted to whatever time frame they decide to keep updating it till they cut off while the 365 you never have to worry about buying another version of Windows anymore because whatever version comes out they will just keep on updating it so that's gonna be your choice right there subscription or full version I like the full version because I don't have to worry about the subscription I'm gonna use that office till I decide I need another version which Usually, people use Office for a very long time before they decide to upgrade to another version. Because I know some people right now that's running Office 2016. And actually, I've ran into somebody who was running Office 2007. Apparently, what they're doing, they don't require the newer version of Office, so it's all good with them. So if I'm recommending Office to you, if you don't want to deal with the subscription, go with the full version. It's a one-time cost. It's going to cost you more, but it's going to be cheaper in the long run because this you have to keep on renewing $100, $100, $100. So you can do this for the next 10 years or you can buy Office one time for probably about two, $300 and use it for whenever you want to decide to upgrade. Okay, so those are the key things I really wanted to point out to you as far as buying a computer. Because sometimes I get asked about buying a computer and how much it's going to cost and all this stuff. But it really boils down to what are you trying to do with that computer. So look at those key features and match it up with your needs and you have an easy time to pick out what you want. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this topic, go ahead and leave it in the comment section and I will answer it for you. I want to thank you for taking the time for watching this video. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.